Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and these are the quietest motorcycle helmets that I've ever worn. First up is going to be the Schubert C3 Pro. Even on a naked bike at 100 kilometers an hour, no windshield, this guy keeps the noise down to 82 decibels. So how do we know that? Well, in typical German fashion, Schubert built their own acoustic wind tunnel so they could have very precise metrics on volume. Quietness is kind of their thing, so don't be surprised when another Schubert helmet pops up in this video. Since this is a flip-up helmet, Schubert was able to use an abnormally chunky neck roll and chin curtain. It's very tight. That's the main reason why this helmet blocks out a lot of road noise. But there are a few other clever little things going on here too. Like these little triangular protrusions on the visor here, and they're meant to create turbulence in the airflow that actually prevents whistling noise. Aside from quietness though, why would I buy a C3 Pro? Well, it is a modular helmet with a drop-down sun visor, and if that's what I want, then the C3 Pro is definitely the slimmest way to get it. I mean, this helmet is unusually small. It makes the competition look like bobbleheads, actually. I might buy a C3 Pro for the colorway, too. I mean, this matte blue on here is one of the nicest finishes I've ever seen on a motorcycle helmet, and Schubert has a billion other equally stunning colorways, too. And they even have a few that are perfectly matched to factory BMW paint, which gives you a pretty good idea about who likes to buy this type of helmet. In that vein, yeah, I might buy a C3 Pro as a status symbol. It costs a thousand dollars, which is probably more than it needs to be. Especially considering that its closest rival, which is HAC's Arfamax, weighs an identical 1,610 grams. It has a very similar round head shape. It has a little bit worse road noise, but much better ventilation. Well, that only costs $550. Speaking of ventilation, this is straight up bad. I mean, I was tempted to go easy on the Schubert because it's so beautifully made and it costs more than my first motorcycle, but honestly, it's hot as hell. I mean, they were so overzealous with the neck roll and the chin curtain and sealing out the road noise that they basically created a sealed bubble. Now, I tested it on a 32 degrees Celsius day in Montreal. I eventually just had to give up and ride with the face shield open to keep my face from melting, and that kind of defeats the point of a quiet helmet. The one positive thing I can actually say about ventilation is that with this interior duct here, air is actually funneled across the visor very well. I tried my absolute hardest with my breathing and everything trying to get this lens to fog up, but it wouldn't do it. Style-wise, you'll see this helmet on ADV bikes a lot, although considering how stuffy it is, I actually have no idea how anyone off-roads in this thing. And Schubert also says that the rear spoiler on here turns it into a real sport helmet, and I kind of call bullshit on that as well. I mean, personally, I would take the C3 Pro for luxurious touring and chilly weather and nothing else. Now, a much better option, in my opinion, is going to be the Shoei Quest. No decibel numbers on this guy, but after riding in both helmets, I can say that this is similar in quietness to the C3 Pro. It's probably a smidge louder, but not by much. The chin curtain isn't nearly as sealed as the C3 Pro, so I'm not actually sure how this helmet is so quiet. I mean, it's definitely larger than the Schubert, so maybe they have more room for soundproofing layers in there. And definitely, for sure, this shield mechanism helps a lot too. It's called the QRSA system, or Quick Release Self-Adjusting System. And what that does is you can see on the base plate here that it's spring-loaded. And so what's actually going to happen is as I push the face shield down over the last ratchet, this entire base plate is going to suck backwards and pull the helmet shield tight against this rubber window beading. And so that creates a really airtight seal that cancels out a lot of noise. I have to say that the Quest is extremely comfortable to wear. I mean, it's an even rounder head shape than the C3 Pro, so it should be even more mismatched to my intermediate head, but I mean, somehow the fit feels equally secure. It feels lighter than the Schubert, even though it's not. I way prefer wearing it. The Quest is definitely cooler too. It's actually the best ventilated helmet on my list with an active uh, chin bar intake, a forehead vent, and then we have two active exhaust ports here on the rear. It might not actually seem like a lot, but trust me, this helmet moves air really well. This helmet was going for 450 bucks on Fortnite.ca when I bought it, so it's a better deal than the shoe berth. And for that money, I am getting a composite fiber shell that aced the Snell M2015 and DOT safety standards while clocking in at 1,650 grams. Yes, that is going to be a smidge heavier than the German option, and yeah, it doesn't have a flip-up chin bar or a drop-down sun visor or anything like that, but hey, I still like wearing the Quest better. My one complaint is that because it's a little bit of a larger shell size, it does catch a fair amount of wind. Now, the third quietest helmet that I've ever worn is the Schubert S2. This guy keeps it down to 85 decibels at 100 kilometers an hour, mainly thanks to aerodynamics. Now see the chin curtain and the neck roll on this one, they're actually fairly minimal. It's going to ventilate a lot of air through here, which is nice for knee-dragging sport riders, but of course, that's also going to let in a lot of road noise. 
To make up for that, the S2 just hogged Schubert's wind tunnel for a couple hundred hours to make sure they got the aerodynamics perfectly right. From the chin curtain spoiler that splits the air up and away from the open neck roll, all the way up and over these turbulators here on the visor that are gonna turbulate the air, prevent whistling noises, and then all the way back to this rear spoiler here, this helmet is a masterclass in minimizing drag and the wind noise that comes with it. Ergo, we can have a helmet that ventilates well from underneath, and yet still manages to be quiet. It also manages to be light. It's 1,530 grams for this size large, even though they managed to stick a drop down sun visor in there. It's very slippery too. Out of all the helmets on my list, this one caught the least wind. Very slick and so it feels light at speed. I do have one complaint though, and that's that this helmet gets a lot louder when you have the chin bar and the forehead vents open. I'm not sure why the difference is so pronounced with the S2, but it is. Anyway, the S2 is DOT and ECE rated. It's an intermediate head shape, and this dark wave version will run you about 850 bucks. Now, in terms of riding style, the drop-down sun visor, the two built-in antennas for Bluetooth comm systems, and the very quiet road noise, that all screams touring use. But at the same time, it's very streamlined, especially in a tuck position, and it's highly ventilated, so that sort of hints at sport prowess. Well, that's an easy one, right? Because touring plus sport equals sport touring, and that's the S2's primary use. It's probably my favorite helmet out there for that purpose. And finally, Shoei's RF1200 probably deserves a mention when it comes to quiet helmets. This is the loudest helmet on my list, but it's still quieter than pretty much everything else. Plus, the RF1200 achieves something that quiet helmets almost never do. It has a racer's cut. And by that, I mean that the chin bar and the neck roll sit higher on the head than a typical motorcycle helmet would do. I mean, just look at this bottom line here. Starting at the chin bar, it pulls up, 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 before dropping down again at the back. This frees up your neck movement to go into a full tuck position or to crane your head around and get a look at the falling distance of the racer behind you. It also makes the helmet easier to put on and lighter to bring the shell up like this, 1,570 grams for this size large. A high cut helmet increases airflow underneath the neck roll as well, which is really good for ventilation. Of course, that's also where noise problems typically arise. The more air that you have flowing underneath a helmet, the more you're going to hear the road. So the fact that the Shoei manages to be a high cut racer style helmet while still being quiet, that's a big deal. Shoei used a couple tricks to pull that one off. They improved the soundproofing since the first generation. They fitted the RF1200 with that exact same spring-loaded auto-sealing face shield mechanism, which we saw earlier, and they made it more aerodynamic. The RF1200 is Snell and DOT rated. It'll cost you about 575 bucks, and it's most at home on sport bikes. When I was riding in it, I did notice that the ventilation didn't work very well at low speeds. But then again, when you're riding fast, it breathes great. And for sport riders, that's probably not an issue. Speaking of which, I should mention a life hack from the world of sport bikes. Earplugs. Those little guys will make the noisiest tin can helmet quieter than everything that we just saw. And the cost of earplugs is measured in pennies rather than dollars. Just saying. So that's it for the quietest motorcycle helmets that I've had the pleasure of riding in. Thank you guys very much for watching.